Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Today our video will be in English, inshallah. We will talk about capnography alphabet. We will take it as a journey with capnography from A to Z. We will talk about definitions, CO2 production, elimination, transport. We will talk about capnography versus pulse oximetry, which is better to be used during patient uh, monitoring and anesthesia monitoring. Is it better to use capnography alone, pulse oximetry alone, or both are mandatory? This is what we're gonna know in our video today. We will also talk about capnography technology, physics, and types. And if we have a time in our lecture today, we will talk about capnography waveform and their interpretation. If we don't have enough time, we will talk about it in another video, inshallah. Okay, I will never forget my first impression when I saw patient monitoring or patient monitor for the first time. For me, it was like, this when you if you remember the matrix film for me it was like this the same uh, if you remember the matrix film numbers 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 a lot of numbers so let's know what are these numbers let's start with capnography in tidal co2 as regard to my information uh, holland 1978 Yes, 1978 was the first country to adapt capnography as an integral part of anesthesia monitoring or during the patient monitoring. American Society of Anesthesiology and as well as other several societies have also adapted capnography as an integral part of anesthesia or during anesthesia monitoring. Capnography is a standard element of ASA monitoring. So what is what other standard element of ASA monitoring? Let's know other standard element. When I say the standard, it means it's mandatory. You are not allowed to anesthetize your patient without this monitoring. First, capnography is the most important one of them also SpO2, oxygen saturation using pulse oximetry. When we monitor our patient, our role, first our role as an anesthesiologist is to prevent hypoxia and prevent anesthesia mishaps. By using both capnography and pulse oximetry, both can prevent almost about 93% of avoidable anesthesia mishaps according to as cyclic claimed study, closed claimed study. So in tidal CO2 and pulse oximetry, both are mandatory. So what other standard element of monitoring, as a monitoring, ECG, non-invasive blood pressure, and anesthesia and temperature. By monitoring our patient by these by the standard element, I don't have to put my hand on pulse to see the pulse volume rate or rhythm. I don't have to look at patient color, the color of the lips as we was doing, we were doing all time ago. When we look at, we need to monitor the color of the vision, we look at the color of the lips to see if there is a sinus or not. By this five standard, we eliminate at least 93% of anesthesia mishaps. Okay, so these are mandatory. What is capnography? We will start first by capnography. Capnography is a non-invasive measurement of the partial pressure of carbon dioxide in the exhaled air. It measures patient ventilation through a metric known as intidal carbon dioxide. In tidal CO2, we measure the value of CO2 carbon dioxide at the end of expiration. 
that's what we say in tidal at the end of tidal volume so in tidal co2 represent co2 level at the end of expiration the normal value for patient regardless patient age sex race or even size range between 35 to 45 millimeter mercury sometimes we hear or we some hear someone say capnogram and the other say capnography what is the difference between capnogram and capnogram capnogram it display real time waveform measurement when we see only a waveform this means capnogram what about capnography capnography it displays wave lenses as well as number measurement. It gives us a waveform plus number. So only waveform, this is capnogram, waveform plus number, this is capnography. What is the O2 and CO2 pathway during anesthesia? During anesthesia, there is an interaction between two major components. The anesthesia machine, which is usually a ventilator and anesthesia circuit, and the patient. The critical connection between the two components is the endotracheal tube, supraglottic airway devices, or even face mask. At this critical point, CO2 typically measured at this critical point. So during anesthesia, the ventilator gives oxygen to the patient. This oxygen transported to the blood, to the tissue. In the tissue, CO2 produced by metabolism and transported by circulation to be exchanged by the lung. So CO2 produced by metabolism, transported by circulation and exchanged by ventilation. So capnography gives us, or the presence of CO2 in the expired air, it reflects directly the elimination of CO2 from the lung to the anesthesia circuit or anesthesia machine. And indirectly, it gives us an idea about CO2 production in the tissue by metabolism and transport of CO2 by circulation to the lung also gives us an idea about elimination of CO2 by the lung to the circuit. So capnography is a non-invasive tool for monitoring both metabolic and respiratory function. The presence of intidal CO2 reflects a change in ventilation. That means that there is an air coming in and out of alveoli. It reflects change in diffusion that means that gas exchange between alveoli and pulmonary circulation. And it also change in perfusion. It means there is a circulation of blood. So in tidal CO2 gives us a great information about CO2 production, metabolism, pulmonary perfusion, alveolar ventilation, respiratory pattern, and CO2 elimination by the cell. Did you see how much it is important to monitor patients using entitled CO2? What is the clinical application of capnography? Capnography can be used in ICU, in uh, anesthesia, uh, in, in operating theater during anesthesia. It is an indirect monitor and help in differential diagnosis of hypoxia before it results in irreversible brain damage. Capnography provides a rapid and reliable method to detect life-threatening condition. It is the gold standard for confirming endotracheal tube placement. We have a rule as an anesthesiologist said, if no trace equal wrong place. No trace, once we intubate our patient, inflate uh, the cuff, and connect patient to the, the anesthesia circuit and the ventilator, first thing to be done is to look at the monitor detecting trace of CO2. If no trace equal wrong place, if you don't found a capnographic trace on the monitor, so your patient, this tube 
is not endotracheal, it's in another place, maybe esophageal, uh, not reaching vocal uh, trachea. So no trace equal wrong place. And if, if you are in doubt, just take it out. If no trace, just take the endotracheal tube and try to maintain oxygenation ventilation with face mask. Okay, and reinsert your or endotracheal tube. So capnography is the gold standard for confirming endotracheal tube placement. It also reflects defective breathing circuit and the airway integrity. It gives us an idea about circulatory failure and monitoring cardiac output. Capnography has a major role during cardiac arrest. It gives us an idea about the quality and assess the quality of CBR during arrest. It also assessing regain return of spontaneous circulation during CPR. If we doing CPR and capnography may be between 50, 10 millimeter mercury, and we found sudden increase in, in tidal CO2, this means that there is a return of spontaneous circulation. Stop CPR and check for circulation. If there is a sudden rise in intidal CO2 capnography. It also help in assessing CO2 retention and unsuspected ventilatory failure. So what about, which is important, pulse oximetry or capnography? Pulse oximetry, it gives us a direct information about patient oxygenation. But capnography, as we mentioned before, gives us an information about patient ventilation. So should we use pulse oximetry alone or it's better to use capnography alone or it is mandatory to use both? As we mentioned before, capnography plus pulse oximetry pores can prevent 90% of preventable anesthesia mishap. So pores are mandatory. You are not allowed to anesthetize your patient without the five as a, as a standard, except if your patient high risk patient and need extra invasive monitoring. You can add extra invasive monitoring, but minimum allowed monitoring. And this is a, a must. This is a must mandatory. Is the five standard: capnography, pulse oximetry, ECG, non-invasive blood pressure, temperature monitoring. Okay, so, but in my opinion, in my opinion, capnography is more important than pulse oximetry. Why capnography, why measuring in tidal CO2 better than uh, SpO2? As we all know that CO2 is 20 times more soluble in blood than oxygen. So if our patient is not breathing normally, CO2 will drop suddenly within seconds, but O2 is degraded gradually within minutes. So CO2 or intidal CO2 is a real-time breathing gas exchange and ventilation. It is a faster and better predictor of root causes immediately within seconds. It can be measured either invasive by using ABG, arterial ABG, we measure PaCO2, or non-invasively through capnography by intidal CO2. Capnography measure exhaled CO2 or measuring exhaled CO2 predict what will happen next with oxygen in blood. And it has a major uh, criteria not that it's not affected by supplemental oxygen. When we as we mentioned, if our patient is not breathing normally, CO2 drops suddenly and give us time to save patient while oxygen decreased gradually and before hypoxia make any irreversible brain damage. So we give time. It, it, it is a direct alarm that there is something happening. But SpO2 monitoring measure blood oxygenation and detect hypoxia. It reflects the change on oxygenation within minutes. It can also be measured invasive through ABG, 
SpO2 or non-invasive via pulse oximetry SpO2. It's affected by supplemental oxygen, and when patients are apnea, pulse oximetry remain normal for prolonged time. As we mentioned in uh, in previous videos, that we, when we pre-oxygenate our patient for five minutes, it gives us a safe apnea time for eight minutes. When we pre-oxygenate our patient well before intubation, this is make an oxygen reserve, as we mentioned, oxygen degraded gradually, so we have time to save the patient and uh, seek for alternative for oxygenation, how to ventilate our, how to oxygenate our patient. So, uh, but this reflected on the monitor delayed on, on with pulse oximeter, but capnography gives us an immediate, immediate within second that there is some sort of defect. We search, we, we have to search for what is the source of, for, for this uh, uh, desaturation. So what types of capnography? There is a, two types uh, or a lot of types of capnography. The most familiar and most famous is mainstream capnography, side stream capnography. Also, there is a micro stream capnography, but these are the two main types of capnography used, mainstream and side stream. Mainstream capnography, the CO2 sensor which measure CO2 is located in the main unit away from patient airway. Here is the endotracheal tube, and this is the anesthesia surgery. CO2 sensor located away from the patient airway. CO2 can be aspirated or gas sample can be aspirated through tiny pump, tiny pump. Here is the tiny pump you throw six feet long capillary tube which is connected one side to the tiny the, the main uh, sensor and the other uh, side to T tube connected to the endotracheal tube through which gas sampling is aspirated to the to the uh, the CO2 sensor the problem here is that the gas aspirated to be measured the CO2 from it contain an acetic gas. So this gas should be either went to scavenging system or returned back to the patient. Okay, advantage of side stream capnography, and this is the most used in our devices, is the side stream capnography. It's easy to connect, no problem with sterilization, can be used in a weak patient, easy to use when patient is in an unusual position such as prone position, a, a unique advantage of side stream capnography is that it can be used in collaboration with simultaneous auto administration via a nasal plunge using simple modification of standard nasal cannula. This allows monitoring of non-intubated patients. The disadvantage of side stream capnography a delay in recording due, due to movement of gases from endotracheal tube to the unit. Maybe there, there will be sample tube obstruction, water vapor pressure changes affect CO2 concentration, uh, pressure drop along the sample tube affect CO2 measurement. Deformity of capnography in children due to dispersion of gases in the sample tube. These are the main disadvantage of side stream capnography. So what about mainstream capnography? When we using mainstream capnography technology, we eliminate the need of scavenging of the anesthetic gas and, and we uh, the need for gas aspiration and scavenging of these gases. Cause CO2 reading is located our CO2 uh, airway adapter located directly in the patient airway between the endotracheal tube and, uh, and uh, anesthesia circuit. CO2 reading directly from the patient airway. There is an airway adapter. In one side, there is an infrared ray sensor which emit infrared rays and the other side 
of the airway adapter, there is an infrared ray detector which detects the emitted light from the infrared sensor. The complication, sorry, the complication, the main complication of, of mainstream capnography, a minute please, the, the main complication of mainstream capnography that water vapor may be condensed in the window of airway adapter. So to prevent this water vapor uh, condensation, airway adapter is need to be increased or, or heated, its heat need to be increased slightly above the body temperature. And this may lead to burn. But this was in previous generation and earlier generation uh, mainstream cabinography. Okay, advantage of mainstream cabinography. No sampling tube, as we said, because reading is directly from the patient or airway. No obstruction, no pollution, no delay in recording. No effect due to pressure drops, which may pressure drops may increase, uh, give false increase in CO2 reading. No effect due to change in water vapor pressure. As we mentioned, no deformity in capno ground due to non-dispersion of gases. So it is suitable for neonate and children. Another disadvantage, but this disadvantage was in the earlier version of uh, our generation of mainstream capnography is the newer, uh, it was heavy in weight, maybe traction on endotracheal tube. But contrary to the earlier version, the newer sensor are lightweight, minimize traction on endotracheal tube. Maybe the light weighted up to uh, 80 gram. Okay, so long elect electrical cord, but it is lightweight. Facial burn, as we said, have been reported with earlier version. This has been eliminated with new sensors, which never reach a temperature high enough even to cause redness of the skin, eliminating the concern for patient burn. The sensor window may club with secretion. However, they can be replaced easily as they are disposable. Difficult to use in unusual positioning, not as a side stream capnography. It is difficult to use, to be used in difficult uh, positioning as in prone position. The new version used disposable sensor window, so eliminating sterilization problem. So what is the physical method of CO2 measurement? There are five physical methods, infrared spectrography, which, and this is the most popular method for CO2 measurement and the less expensive and more compact me uh, way to measure infrared spectrography. Another method is molecular cor correlation spectrography, Raman spectrography, mass spectrography, and photoacoustic spectrography. We will talk about infrared spectrography. This, as I mentioned, this is the most popular, less expensive and more compact way for measuring CO2. It depends on the idea that any polyatomic gases will absorb infrared radiation. When I say polyatomic gases, I mean any molecule with two different atoms, like N2O, nitrous oxide CO2 and water uh, pressure, uh, vapor pressure. Uh, but CO2 selectively absorb wavelengths of 4.3 millimicron of infrared light. In infrared spectrography, there is a focusing lens which emit infrared rays in the other side of the airway adapter, there is an infrared detector or sensor, which measure the amount of light absorbed. And the amount of light absorbed is proportion to 
concentration of the absorbing molecules. There is another way for CO2 measuring is the chemical method, calorimetric CO2 detector. There is a, a pH sensitive chemical indicator which change on color on exposure to CO2. Easy cap 2 is an example of this, these pH sensitive indicator devices. During inspiration and expiration, O2 coming in and out of the alveoli. The, col the color of this it changes, it changes from purple when exposure to room air or oxygen. This purple color, it changes to yellow when exposure to 4% CO2. So when air coming in the alveoli, the color become purple. When CO2 coming out during expiration, color changes to yellow. So this semi-quantitative calorimetry gives us no number. It only tells us if there is CO2 or not. However, this device is not very sensitive when CO2 output is low as during CPR. I think we will stop here and uh, talk about capnography waveform and in, uh, their interpretation in another lecture, inshallah. وأتمنى اللي استفاد من الفيديو حاجة يتعيلي ويتعيل والدتي بجنات الفردوس الأعلى وبالرحمة وبالمغفرة من الله سبحانه وتعالى. أتمنى تدعولي أنا محتاجة لكل دعوة كل إنسان بيحبني. بجد فترة صعبة جدا في حياتي. أتمنى تدعولي كتير جدا 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 وتدعو الوالدتي بجنات الفردوس الأعلى لو استفدتوا بأي شيء من الفيديو ونكمل المرة الجاية إن شاء الله والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله